From Kuja to Cujo, nerds like a lot of things, but there's something they love above all else, and that is correcting people. This is Um Actually. Joining us on today's episode, we have Sam Basher. Hello, thank you for having me back. Thank you for coming back. We also have Ryan Martin. Good night and good luck. Okay, and we have Teo Yang. Ahoy. Ahoy, ahoy. Well, three fantastic contestants. The two of you have played before. Uh, Teo, you have not. Um, but the rules are very simple, uh, which I will explain for you and for any viewers at home who are joining us for the first time. These are uh, uh, false statements, incorrect statements, but the things that you know and love. It's up to all of you to find the thing that I've said that is incorrect, buzz in and correct me. All your corrections must be preceded by the phrase, um, actually, and you can interrupt me at any point in the question. So just two rules, just that simple, but the questions, they're pretty hard. Um, got it? Got it. Got it. Cool. Got it. Love it. Here's our first question, which is about Pokemon. <sighs> the Pokemon anime has been on the air for more than 20 years now. In that time, its protagonist, Pokemon trainer Ash Ketchum, has only won two Pokemon League championships. He's also never caught a legendary Pokemon. Uh... Teo. Um, actually, he has caught a legendary Pokemon. You sound extremely sure of yourself. <laughs> I, so, I feel very sure. I think he caught one and then let it go or something. Mm, that is not what we're going for, okay. no. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Ryan. Um, actually, yes. Ash Ketchum has caught a legendary Pokemon, and it's Pikachu. He's iconic, <laughs> he's legendary. He's a legend. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolute ledge, Pikachu. <laughs> uh, no. Sam. Um, actually, he, Ash specifically, has won every of, single one of his uh, Pokemon League championships because he's supposed to be the best there ever was, uh, per the theme song. Per the theme song. The theme song would let you, lead you to believe that, but that is, that is incorrect. That's, that yeah. blows. Uh, well, I'm going to say, obviously no one got this one. Ash has only won one Pokemon Hi. League uh, championship, so it's not that he's won none, but Oof. it's just one in those 20 years uh, of trying to be the very mm -hmm. best like no one ever was. He... Kind of blows. <laughs> but to be fair, he's still 10. He's still 10. Yeah, he's he is still 10. Yeah. I, yeah. Maybe I'm like a, a canonically in universe. He is still 10. So like maybe <laughs> I'm expecting too much from him. But also, literally anyone who's played Pokemon is probably a better trainer than Ash Ketchum is at this point. Oh, yeah. I've won eight, I'd say. <laughs> I'd say I've won <laughs> eight. Oh, right. Pokemon Pokemon Just eight. Yeah. Oh, my. The millennia spanning conflict between Highlanders, known as the game, is governed by a set of rules. For example, Highlanders may not engage in combat on holy ground. This rule isn't limited to a specific religion, and over the course of the series, cathedrals, Buddhist shrines, Stonehenge, and even a Roman temple are referenced as holy ground. Ryan. Um, actually, the plural of Highlanders is Highlander. <laughs> <laughs> I have no clue. Uh, <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> um, actually, it's not called the game. It's called uh, Duel of the Ancients. <laughs> uh, no, it is called the game. Oh, wow. It's called the game, yeah. Fun. Ooh, I was going to go with that one, too. Mm. Sam. Um, actually, yeah. <laughs> one exception being Stonehenge yeah. because of... The reasons the, for final battle, they sure, were much cooler the, there for the, sure. The classic mm. loophole. Mm. Mm. Uh, no. Uh, any any other guesses uh, before I call it? I don't know anything about Highlander. So I'm yeah, clear, clear, clearly, I mean that crazy. clearly seems to be the case. So we're, we're just be <laughs> stabbing around anyway. Crazy. That's fine. Hey, look, you know, I hadn't had any Highlander questions. Like, I want to ask about Highlander. So uh, the what we're looking for here is um actually. Uh, and Ryan, you were kind of starting to get close, uh, uh, but it's that the, they are not called Highlanders. The Highlander is the one specific character, the protagonist. They're called Immortals. It'd be like calling all Pokemon Pikachus or something, you know? Like yeah. uh, my grandma did do that. Which so, yeah, people do do. To be fair. <laughs> all game systems are Nintendo. No, they're all Nintendos, yeah. exactly. Yeah, uh, but but yeah, but all the all the rest is true. Um, it's, it's like yeah, like we've got a competition going on where we're just gonna fucking murder each other until there's only one of us left. But Let's respect world religions, mm. okay? Like, be open to other cultures, and like, let's not let's not be rude, right? Okay? What's the? I wonder what the limit is, and if like, you know, Pastafarianism yeah. is a religion. Mm. Can you not fight where the, those Do people they have are? To vote on it? Yeah, there's some like super pedantic, uh, <laughs> like like immortal who's just like it's like, well, you know, there's actually a small sect. It's not it's not a mainstream religion, but it's a small cult, and they actually live right here at this house. So we can't I, fight here. I'm actually founding my own religion, and uh, you can't fight at the Olive Garden. You can't fight at Fazoli. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> nope. uh, well, no points for that one Ooh. either. Mm. Feeling good. Uh, here's a video game question. 
Rather than using a traditional Belmont clan vampire hunter, Castlevania Symphony of the Night has players assume the role of Alucard, a half-vampire seeking to destroy his father, Dracula. However, on first playthrough, the game's final boss is the Dark Priest, Shaft. To finally confront Dracula, the player must beat the game and then start a new game plus, which is the same game but with harder enemies and new secrets. Um, actually, New Game Plus is uh, not hard. You just have all of your, you you start it um, with all your weapons from the previous game. Incorrect. Damn. I'm um, actually, uh, I'd say it, it, first playthrough, you are able to unlock Dracula as a final boss. It doesn't have to be replayed through all the way from the beginning again. Hmm. Your wording of that, I don't think it's what you intended, but it's poor. technically true. Oh! So I'm going to allow it. Wow. Uh, uh, what we said it is true that that, that uh, on the first playthrough, the final boss you encounter is uh, Shaft, but then what happens after you defeat him is the whole game turns upside down, and you have to play uh, backwards through right. through uh, the game that you just played, but now upside down. And then once you get back to the beginning, then you then you face Dracula. Is that like the basic reason why like Dracula backwards is? Alucard. Alucard, hey, you oh, picked that one. Yes, it is, because you play okay. Alucard, who is Dracula backwards. Well, uh, point for Sam on that one, wow. for, for wiggling his way into this. <laughs> and this is a fan-submitted question. Ooh. So this question comes to us from a fan, sent in this question with the express purpose of trying to stump the three of you. From Justin Burrow, a.k.a. Jables Wavels. Everyone needs a best friend. Superman famously had Crypto the Superdog as his animal counterpart, and Batman had a long list of pets, including Ace the Bat Hound, Mogo the Bat Ape, the Bat Mite, and Bat Cow, a.k.a. the Battlin' Bovine. Yes, Sam? I'm um, actually, Bat Mite's not a pet. That is correct. <laughs> Thank God! Oh my God! I feel so smart. Do you, <laughs> That's never gonna happen again. <laughs> do you uh, do you know anything more about it's Batmite? It's a fifth dimensional imp, kind of like Mister Mixie Spitlick yes. in the comics, where it's just there to. Mm. He's Batman's number one fan from the fifth dimension. It gets. This is the heavy drug age of writing <laughs> comics. Like a, he's like a little fairy that dresses up like. Batman yeah. and happens to know everything about Batman and just kind of messes with him. He's but like, also loves He's him. like the world's worst fan, the like most obsessive fan. Mm. <laughs> and very funny to me, just just like it's like, yeah, Batmite. You know anything more about Batmite? It's like, yeah, you know, he's a fifth dimensional imp. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, <laughs> you know, you know we all know those fifth dimensional uh -huh. imps. Uh, just one of your standard and run-of-the-mill things. Well, that is a point for Sam for recognizing Batmite wow. as the fifth dimensional okay. imp that he is. And this will bring us to our first shiny question of the game. All right, this is a game called Order Up. You have a, a selection of robots on the other side of this board. I would like you to please arrange them from smallest robot to largest robot. Okay, go ahead and flip those over. Let's take a look at those bots. Great, so Sam, let's take a look at what you've got and uh, just run us quickly through through that order that you think you got here. All right, so we start out with smallest. Microbot, okay. Metal Sonic, because I feel like Sonic's like four feet. Uh, Johnny Five, he felt like like an even 5'7", something like that. <laughs> Tars, I felt like McConaughey was like looking at the console eye level. Anyways, after that, it's pretty easy. Uh, Iron Giant. I'm not familiar with this gentleman. Uh -huh. um, and then a Unicron, I feel like, is the largest of the of these gentlemen on here. Very good. Um, uh, Ryan, uh, let's let's see what you got. So I really don't forget about this, but we've got <laughs> Metal Sonic and then Johnny Five. Okay. And then I've also got Tars. Unicron? I thought it said Unicorn. Uh -huh. The other person that I don't know, the Iron Giant. And I feel like Microbot was a troll, and so I made it the biggest one on a whim. Very good. Uh, and Teo, let's see what you got. All right. Uh, I think this was a trap and I fell for it because okay. I feel like Microbot's probably big. Okay. Um, but I put them there anyways. And then same thing, like Metal Sonic is like tiny. I'm imagining based off the game and it's not that big on my TV. Uh, Johnny <laughs> Five could be gigantic, but I, just from based off this photo, he looks kind of small. Tars is like a human. It's like a human size. This is a Transformer, I think. I have no idea what this is, but I just love the Iron Giant the most, so I put them <laughs> as the biggest. The power of love will, <laughs> yeah. will bring him up. Okay, great. Ryan, uh, you you got none of these correct. Um, <laughs> uh, Teo, you got uh, you got four correct, and Sammy, you got 
five correct. Whoa. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the answer should be and where we're at. Uh, it, it was a double uh. trap. Microbot is just, a, in fact, a tiny bot that's from Big Hero 6. Microbot, Metal Sonic, Johnny 5, Tars is about six feet tall, and then the, la the end is where people tend to get tripped up, but the Iron Giant is about 50 feet tall, Unicron is larger than a planet, and Tengen Tapagur and Logan is over 10 million light years large. Um, <laughs> so easily the largest robot on, robot on here. That is our order. So when, when Tengen touches its toes or something, it's, <laughs> it's going through 10 million light years <laughs> to yeah. touch its toes. It takes a long time to touch its toes. <laughs> okay. It takes a long time to do, do anything. It's really, uh, wow. really a drag. Yeah, so uh, that point will go to Sam for being able to identify uh, the most in, in the correct order. Where would we be without you? You caught all of our mistakes. Here are some of our favorite corrections from you. Here are three corrections from our exclusive Dropout Discord. At Suroepk says, um, actually, Padme's maiden name is Naberry. 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 Naberry? I don't remember what I said, but it wasn't Naberry. Dr. Caduceus says, um, actually, Middle Earth is flat to the elves. The Silmarillion states that the world was curved after the fall of Numenor, preventing access to Valinor. However, elves can travel the straight path across it. And, having read this, I'm no closer to understanding it. One point for Dr. Caduceus. Beckett says, um, actually, the Chocobo pictured was from Final Fantasy XV. Gogo originates from Final Fantasy VI and does not appear in XV, so he could not possibly ride that Chocobo. This is correct. We had to use that image for legal reasons I don't fully understand. So I will take one point from our legal team and give it to Beckett. Our next question is about Scott Pilgrim. Scott Pilgrim, the 23-year-old bassist for the band Sex bob develops a crush on a ninja delivery girl for Amazon.com named Ramona Flowers. But in order to date Ramona, Scott must first defeat her League of Evil Exes, a supervillain-esque group of six ex-boyfriends and one ex-girlfriend. Um, Teo. Actually, she doesn't work for Amazon. She works for FedEx? Mmm... <laughs> <laughs> No, no, no. Um, actually, she is not a ninja. She's described as being nin nin having ninja-like qualities, being a ninja delivery girl, so no, no. Um, actually, I really don't think that she works for Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> she works for Kinko's. <laughs> Gosh, here's the thing. You, you're both very close with that guess is the thing, which is why I hesitated so much. But the way you have corrected me is it, it is still not entirely accurate. So I, I will mm. say that you're close. So if someone can get a little more specific there. I'm um, actually, yes. and this was such a silly oversight on both of our parts before. She doesn't work for Amazon, she works for FedEx Kinko. <laughs> <laughs> Incorrect. How? Uh, <laughs> How? Um, you're in the right frame of mind. Um, uh, no points for this one. And this is, I will admit, this is incredibly picky and pedantic. But that is also the game. So I said that Ramona Flowers works for Amazon.com. Uh, but she does not work for Amazon.com. She works for Amazon.ca because uh, Scott Pilgrim takes place in Canada. Uh, so it is, it would be incorrect to say Amazon.com. And wow. I wanted to give it to, to, to the other folks, but you both said she doesn't work for Amazon. If you had said she doesn't work for Amazon.com, <laughs> I would have allowed that. But it, she does, in fact, still work for Amazon. Fair. Tough but fair. Tough but fair. <laughs> is this based off the movie? Solely, like... It's both of them. Both of them. Yeah. She works for Amazon in the movie? Mm-hmm. Interesting. Cool. Well, no points for that one because it was a very tricky, stupid little question. Good news, ass fans! I'm talking about butts again. Bidets are no longer just for rich assholes. They're for every asshole, regardless of that asshole's income. Get your ass in gear with a Hello Tushy bidet. Hello Tushy's brand new 3.0 modern bidet attachment is here to clean your butt better than your puny human hands ever could. It's stylish, it's eco-friendly, it's easy to install, and it can even save you money. You're gonna love this, because not only does the Hello Tushy 3.0 clean your butt with a precise stream of water, it also cleans itself with an automatic smart spray nozzle. That's right, it's a robot that cleans everything all at once. It's just spraying everywhere, but in a good way. 
Hello Tushy attaches to your existing toilet. There's no extra electricity, no extra plumbing, and it cuts your toilet paper usage by 80%, so it'll pay for itself in a matter of months. Plus, Hello Tushy has your ass covered with a 60-day risk-free trial and a 12-month warranty. Join millions of happy Hello Tushy customers right now and clean your butt with every flush. Good news, we have a special offer just for our viewers. Go to hellotushy.com slash actually, and you'll get 10% off your order and free shipping. That's 10% off plus free shipping just by going to hellotushy.com slash actually. One more time, that's hellotushy.com slash actually. Now get your butt back to the show. And we'll move on to a <laughs> Star Wars question. Yay. In Return of the Jedi, we meet the Max Rebo Band, which consists of frontman Max Rebo, an Ortolan who uses his deft hands to play the Red Ball Jet Organ, and 11 other members of various species playing a variety of instruments. Um, actually, he is not an Ortolan, because an Ortolan, I believe, is a French dish <laughs> where you eat a... a a bird hole. Uh, that is true, uh, but he's all, the both things are true. <laughs> both things are true, okay, great. Uh, yeah, I, a part of eating that dish is you, you put a napkin over your head uh, uh, when you eat it, and some, some people say it is, it, you know, it's just like, you know, get the aroma, and others say it is to hide your face from God, uh, because you are, you are just eating a songbird hole, and <laughs> even the people who are doing it is like, we probably shouldn't be doing this, right? This, this, no. this sucks. We have um, to drown this bird <laughs> yeah, in wine. In wine. <laughs> we are comically rich. <laughs> Commonly rich and evil people. <laughs> yes, Ryan. Um, actually, he plays it with his feet. That is correct. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, we snuck it in there, just a little thing. But yeah, Max Rebo doesn't play the organ with his hands. He plays it with his feet. Um, you know, it's sort of like a weird thing where like there are some like action figures that like that portray Max Rebo as a sort of like standing elephant thing, and people have been like, no, 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 that's wrong. If you look at the original drawings, Max Rebo has just like a gross old butt that is sitting on a stool, and the things you think are his hands are actually his feet that he's just like you know, like stomping on the keys with. Um, but yeah, that point goes to Ryan. Mm -hmm. Here is an Overwatch question. The US government formed Overwatch in response to the Omnic Crisis, a robot uprising of artificially intelligent machines built by other artificial intelligences. Overwatch's original roster included several characters who are playable in the game, including two US military personnel, Gabriel Reyes and John Francis Jack Morrison. Yes, Ryan. Um, actually, I don't think that the U.S. government created Overwatch. That's it's a global correct. effort. Yeah. It was, a, yeah, the U.N. created Overwatch, not the U.S. government. The problem was right there in the second word of, <laughs> wow. uh, of the question. Everything after that was just correct detail. I was like, yeah, this is how when the game starts, uh, this is the story it tells you. That all made sense. Yeah, yeah. Thank um, God, because I've only just played the game. I've, ne I've never only picked up a multiplayer part of the game. I knew nothing about what <laughs> yes. happened in between, so thank you for getting that quickly. Yeah. To be fair, most of the lore of Overwatch does not exist in the game. No. Yes. There's like a preamble, and then you have to watch, like, watch the, the videos and the comics and like all these things to figure out like who these people are. It's purely a multiplayer game, so you can skip everything. I don't, I barely read anything. That's on, on the screen. <laughs> it's funny because like the lore is so deep, considering that basically none of it is like it's sort of referenced in the game, but it's just like, wow, they really put a lot of thought into this to not ever present it to you. Yeah, it doesn't even play into the game. Like you fight alongside all the villains <laughs> of Overwatch and the Omnics and everything. It's just a little confusing. Um, well, that was a point for Ryan. Well, we're gonna move on to our second shiny question, which is a game we're calling Needs More Pixels. We are going to show you an image, some iconic image, um, but we've taken that image and we have pixelated it all to hell. Uh, there's five levels of pixelation, uh, and you can only guess once what you think it is to identify it. All right, so let's show that image. This is our extremely pixelated image. This <laughs> is what we've got here. So you can either take a guess at what this is, or, uh, or if you all want to, none of you want to risk it, then, then you can pass and we'll move on to the next level of clarity. Maybe it's like the, you know those images where you have to cross your eyes. Yeah, like a magic eye. There you go. <laughs> Maybe magic, you pixelate a magic eye. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we pixelate a magic eye and the answer we're looking for is you're under the sea. <laughs> um, um, I would never, I couldn't you would never. at this stage. No. No, you're both passing. No. Teo, no. you're all gonna pass. Okay, no. let's. I have a feeling. All right, let's make it <laughs> one level clearer. Yeah, it's a, there's a couple more pixels there. It's still pretty, pretty blocky, pretty chunky. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm loving everyone's face. It's very <laughs> a lot of squinting, oh leaning God. back. 
but you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go you're, for it. You're going to try go to go for it? it? Okay, I'll go for Teo, it. Teo, what is your guess? Um, this is an image from Breaking Bad when they're wearing their, like, um, hazmat suits to make meth. Oh, interesting. No. Okay. <laughs> Either of you going to get a guess or you can, or you want to? So no. No. All right. <laughs> no, no. All right, let's, let's bring it one level clearer. It's from, uh, it's from Lord of the Rings. It's the one ring on Sauron's finger. Oh, that is correct. This oh. is the one ring of power on Sauron's finger. Let's, let's, let's click up that clarity and take a look. There it is. Boom. The one ring of power. Uh. Uh. I'm just impressed. That was great. Wow. I was going to say Legend of Zelda, and he was doing a dumb pose with the sword like sideways. Yeah, that was nothing. An iconic shot of him doing yeah. it. You know, yep. on the cover. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yep, there it is, the one ring of power. Uh, we've got a couple layers uh, of clarity in, but uh, Ryan, that, that point goes to you. Heck yeah. Hey, I made a mistake and you caught it. If you want to correct me, you can do that. Just tweet at um actually show or go to our exclusive dropout Discord and correct me there. If we like your correction, we might even feature it on a future episode. Uh, this next question is about Marvel Comics. Marvel Comics. Before becoming supervillain Dr. Doom, Victor Von Doom attended the private college Empire State University, along with Reed Richards, who eventually became the superhero Mr. Fantastic. As a student, Victor worked on a machine to communicate with his mother in hell, in hope of freeing her soul. But the machine exploded, leaving Victor with a scarred face that he covered up with his Dr. Doom mask. Yes, Sam. Um, actually, they did not attend Empire State University. That's where Spider-Man went to school, and they went to uh, Harvard, like a real, like an actual <laughs> real school. Like they went to a real school that exists in our world. They didn't go to Harvard, but you're correct. You're, you're close enough that I'm gonna go and allow it. They, they, uh, they did not go to Empire State University, um, which was attended by Spider-Man. Uh, they went to State University at uh, how do you pronounce this? He Hegeman? I don't know. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so not Empire State University, that's Spider-Man. State University at Hedgerman. If I said that wrong, someone's gonna correct me. The rest is true, he is trying to contact his mother in that's hell. That's bizarre. Gotta try once. How wild to know that there is an afterlife and to know that your mother is in hell mm. and being like, I should talk to her. <laughs> I should give her a call once in a while. That's the thing that is crazy to me is like, I. It's nice that he loves his mother enough to contact her when she's in hell. You never assuming... call. I'm in hell. <laughs> <laughs> I assume she did bad things to get there. She made a deal with Mephisto. Or... <laughs> what did she get out of that? Going to hell. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to. I want to see hell. You keep, keep my soul. My soul. Yeah. Yeah. Also funny to me that at the time, if he was just a student at at, at State University at this time, <laughs> he was not a doctor. My villain name is Graduate Student Doom. <laughs> <laughs> Doom MBA. <laughs> yeah, I went to business school. Um, well, uh, that point goes to Sam. Here we go. This is about uh, John Carter, the John Carter novels. The only knowledge we have of John Carter's mysterious past is that he was a gold prospector on Earth. But that doesn't matter because although he may have once been a normal human, on Mars he gains a variety of superpowers, including telepathy and superhuman physical ability, which is attributed to Mars's low gravity. Yes, Sam. Um, actually, he also, oof, this might just be in the movie, but didn't he fight in the Civil War? He did fight in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to count that. What side was he fighting on in the Civil War? Not our favorite side. Not our favorite side. <laughs> Not the <laughs> side we wanted to be fighting for. <laughs> did they include that in the movie? I never yeah. saw the movie. Yeah, they did. Oh, the boy. It's not the worst, but it is a weird, it's a weird take. It, they may have changed it. If, I don't remember. If you're going to... No, no, they did not. <laughs> <laughs> if you're going to introduce a character and be like, hey, this is going to be our sympathetic hero, I don't know if you want to open with it. Like, and here he is fighting for the Confederate. Wow. in the Civil War. Uh, it was a weird moment in the movie, and you mainly just want them to get to Mars and not have to deal with the politics of Civil War. Oh, just a truly bad way to, to try to make your hero oh sympathetic off the bat. Uh, He's a veteran. He's, <laughs> right. what, are, you, are you not supporting our nation's <laughs> veterans? Uh, that point will go to Sam uh, before we get into any uh, crazier territory here. Okay, well, here is a shiny question we're calling Medic. Um, oops, you fucked up and you're gonna die. That is, unless you can match each character to the healing method of their choice. Ooh. So there are uh, power-ups on the other side of this, specifically things that will heal a character. But of course, healing power-ups are different game to game, so it's up to you to match the correct healing power-up with the correct character. Uh, whoever can get the most will get the point. All right, let's flip those over. Let's take a look.
can't be right. <laughs> <laughs> I only want to get one right, but I feel like it's not going to happen. Like Maybe if I right don't too. think about it. <laughs> uh, so Sam, why don't you tell us, tell us how to heal these these broken, broken bodies? Oh, should I know who these a lot of these people are? Because I don't, <laughs> I don't know who they are. So off to a good start. Okay. Our night friend here goes with their best friend, the Red Lady. Okay. Who's got Advil. And then wrote Adam down because I feel like science. Beach dude, probably eating chicken. Um, <laughs> you got Link. I feel like it's a fla like a flask shaped like a heart. Probably wrong with that one. Earthworm Jim had to be the weird one. Dog food. If it's not that, then I definitely got nothing right on this. <laughs> and then the last, I only had green herb left. Very good. Ryan, why don't you show us what you got? Uh, I think I started off in the same place. Okay. The red lady, Adam. I went with the green herb. I saw a link, and I also couldn't think of what that healing thing was. I was thinking of a fairy or a flask. But I do remember that he could, like, you can throw chickens around, and that's very fun. And I thought that would heal his soul. <laughs> <laughs> um, dog food certainly felt like it had to be Earthworm Jim. And then Estes flask on whatever that last game is that I don't know also. All right. Teo, why don't you show Ooh, us what you I wish, Can we do like five of these in a row? Um, <laughs> so, okay, so this is a night in Dark Souls, so the Estes Flask. Okay. Uh, this is, I believe, Claire Valentine from Resident Evil, so the herbs are the classic healing things in Resident Evil games. I don't know who this character is, but they look like a beat-em-up game character, and the classic thing is like eating a whole chicken while you're fighting guys. <laughs> this is Link from the second Zelda game, the weird one. It's like an RPG-ish, so you talk to the red lady to get healed. Earthworm Jim, you eat Adams. I don't, I don't know why. Uh, and then this is a Wolfenstein, the character in Wolfenstein, uh, the new one, and that game's kind of fucked up, so you eat dog food to heal. All right, well, uh, Sam, you got one correct. Uh, Ryan, you got none correct. Wait, and <laughs> Teo, you got them all correct, yes. and you were able to identify most of the characters and all of the games. Uh, that is uh, Jill Valentine, I think. Jill um, Valentine. But, um, but other than that, um, you identified basically everything on that board, so that point goes to Teo. Whew. Nice. <laughs> yeah, it's they eat dog food. It's that bad. In the Wolfenstein, in Wolfenstein. games, they eat, they oh, eat yeah. the dog food? In the Wolfenstein game, the new ones, uh, I think the Nazis have won. <laughs> Oof. And John Oof. Carter. John Carter <laughs> yeah. is the hero. John Carter's the, he the little leader of the Nazi forces <laughs> cool. in Wolfenstein. Well, yeah, that, that's bleak all around. You're yep. eating dog food, and the Nazis have won. Well, this brings us to our last question of the game, which, as always, concerns real life skills. Uh, it's just something that might be valuable for your real life. Because influenza mutates, it's important to get a new flu vaccine with each flu season. Even healthy people in good shape are vulnerable to infection, and antibiotics won't get rid of the flu if you're infected. It's also important to get the vaccine fast because it takes up to two weeks to protect your system. Most risks associated with the flu vaccine are myths, but there are a couple worth noting. There's a slim chance of getting the flu from the injection, you may experience some soreness from the injection, and people with egg allergies should ask for a special version of the vaccine. Um, Damn. actually, if you can't eat eggs, uh, you can Go to hell. <laughs> <laughs> if you can't eat eggs, I don't like you, and, uh, I think you can, I think you can still get the flu shot. Uh, normal in, one. Incorrect, you do need to ask for a special, uh, special, uh, version of the flu shot if you have an egg allergy. Um, actually... I didn't read the book, but I saw the movie. Oh, sure, yeah. Um, so I know <laughs> Outbreak. <that. laughs> I don't think there's any uh, risk that you will actually contract influenza. It's only the symptoms. That's correct. Yes. Uh, 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 you can't get the flu from the vaccine. You may get some symptoms that feel like the flu, but it is not the flu. Um, and if you do come down with the flu, you we were already going to get sick. It takes it does take two weeks to take effect, so you were already infected by so the time you got like, the oh, vaccine. people are like, oh, I got my shot, and then exactly, I got sick, yes, and then I couldn't yes, eat yeah. eggs. And then, uh, <laughs> and then, yeah, the egg thing, I assume because it's cultured in albumin, maybe, or something like that. Uh, is that is that the case? Yeah, I believe that is the case, um, that they're, they're cultured in eggs. Yeah. yeah, so you might have some adverse reaction to that if you're allergic to eggs. Uh, so that is a point for Ryan. Our final score here, five for Sam, four for Ryan, one for Teo, making Sam the winner of Woo. this episode. Um, thank you all for playing with us today, and thank you for watching. Join us next time for even more pedantic corrections here on Um Actually. Actually.